prima lettera dell'Apostolo Paolo Pietro che abbiamo sentito. The first letter of Peter that we heard before contains a passage of serenity. He speaks of Jesus. He bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Jesus is the shepherd, the pastor. This is how Peter sees him, who came to save, to save the sheep who were straying. It was us in Psalm 23 that we've read after that reading. We repeated, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The presence of the Lord as shepherd, as the shepherd of the sheep. And Jesus in the 10th chapter of John we read, he presents himself as shepherd. Rather, or in, not only as the shepherd, but the door through which the flock enters. Everyone before who had entered through that door were robbers and thieves. They wanted to exploit the sheep the flock, the fake pastors. And in the history of the church, there have been many of these. They're not interested in the flock, but wanted to climb the ladder or were interested in politics or money. But the flock knows them. They've always recognized them. And they go in search of God by their own paths. But when there is a shepherd, a pastor who brings the flock forward, The good shepherd listens to the flock, guides the flock, takes care of the flock, and the flock knows how to distinguish between these types of shepherds. They don't make this. They don't make a mistake. The flock trusts. The good shepherd trusts Jesus. Only those shepherds who are similar to Jesus, those are the ones that the flock trusts. Those who, the Jesus style needs to be the style of other shepherds. But even Jesus, the good shepherd, as it says, as Peter says, in the first reading. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. He was meek. One of the signs of a good shepherd is meekness. A good shepherd is meek. A shepherd who is not meek is not a good shepherd. There's something hidden. He's got something to hide. Because meekness 
makes oneself seem as he is without defending himself. And, and more, a uh, shepherd is tender, the tenderness of drawing near to others. He knows his sheep one by one by name, individually by name. And he takes care of each one as if it were the only one, to the point that when they return home after a work, a day of work, tired, and they realize that one is missing, they go out to work again in order to seek the one and brings it back on his shoulders, brings it back on his shoulders. This is the Good Shepherd. This is Jesus. This is the one who accompanies us on the paths of our lives. He does that for everyone. And this idea of a pastor, a shepherd, this idea of the flock and the sheep is an Easter ideal. In the first week of Easter, the church sings that beautiful hymn for the newly baptized. These are the new lambs, similar to what we heard at the beginning of the Mass. It's an ideal of community, of tenderness, of goodness, of meekness. It's a church that wants Jesus, or perhaps loves Jesus, and it's how he guards the church. This is a beautiful Sunday. It's a Sunday of peace. It's a Sunday of tenderness and meekness so that our shepherd might take care of us. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. <laughs> 